for bonsai, this is uh, some combination of of like skill and repetition. So when I'm working on on putting the wire on the tree, I'm not really thinking of anything other than putting the wire on the branches and how the wire goes on. And I'm, you know, it's it's very like the mind is blank kind of a, a situation. Because, of course, when you're studying, then, you know, you have to think about what you're doing. But at a certain time, after repetition of, of doing something, it becomes just there's like a muscle memory involved. And so I don't actually have to think a lot about applying the wire. There's this combination of, of the, what we, in Japanese we call the, the bijitsu and the gijitsu, right? The, the aesthetic issues that you're concerned with and the... the technical you know, technique of, of what you're doing and, and so there's some kind of dialect between those two things so I'm, if I'm thinking about the aesthetics and I'm also thinking about the, the technique that I'm using when I'm using the technique I'm focused on the application of that technique but then I take a step back and then that's when I'm thinking about the aesthetics of what I'm doing so for okay, so I'm going to start bending this branch, and when I'm bending, I'm going to stop talking, and I'm going to focus on on bending. You know, I have to listen to the tree, I have to focus, because you can bend something, and if you bend with that improper application of force, you can crack, you can break branch very easily if you're not paying attention. Um, so to that end, when I was studying, I asked one of my seniors, you know, do you do you guys listen to music? Why don't why don't you listen to music? But he said, you can't listen to music when you're doing this because if you're listening to music, you can't listen to the tree. My name is Adam Jones and I'm originally from the United States, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And I came to Japan in 2011. I am, at the moment, the only Western bonsai professional to own and operate a bonsai garden in Japan. I started my full apprenticeship in August 2012. So I finished my year contract with the English school I was working for. And then once I had finished that obligation, then I shifted to study bonsai full time. I've been studying here at Monsan for uh, four years. Yeah, so I'm going to explain some things about what I'm doing today to take care of this tree. Uh, later on tonight, we're putting it in display at a restaurant. When you're a deshi, the, you don't really, it's like indentured servitude, let's call it that, right? So we were working um, from a normal day, I'll put that in quotes, normal, uh, is probably about 7.30 in the morning until about 7.30 or 8.00, it can be even earlier. So there were plenty of times when I would start work at 5 o'clock in the morning and we would finish after midnight. Um, and so when I calculate this out, it, it, I did the math one time and it basically works out to be about 85 to 90 hours of work every week. Working, we have over the course of a month, you have three days rest. In, the, in one month, three days rest a month for five straight years. That's a very, very, very intense. Being an apprentice, it's, 
it's so difficult. And for me as a foreigner, because I had the, the language issues to deal with, you know, I had that hurdle to overcome. I had the cultural aspects to try to figure out. I had the, the bonsai aspects to try to figure out. I had the, the social kind of time scheduling impact on me. You know, I'm not a kid. I have, I started my apprenticeship when I was 28. So I have this experience of being an adult, being, you know, free to do what I feel like doing and, and my own obligations. And then to have that, someone to say, you just throw all that away. This is what we're doing. This is all you can do. You no longer have free cho freedom of choice, basically. Um, that's very hard. So it was a very, very difficult, very kind of dark moment in time for five years. Every garden is gonna operate slightly different, but where I worked, we were given a place to stay, a place to live. We were fed and we were given a very small stipend for our time, right? That amount of money is basically enough to buy like breakfast every day and pay for a cell phone. There is no expendable income and there is no time off. So it's not like you, oh, I can, you know, I can save up my money and I can go on holiday. It's just not gonna happen. There is no holiday, there is no time off. what is the best bonsai? What is the ideal bonsai? And unfortunately, that's a challenging question to answer. You can take any kind of woody tree or shrub and, and turn it into bonsai. So many people look at uh, bonsai and they think that they have been genetically dwarfed. Wait, but that's actually not true. Bonsai, it's the techniques of pruning and how you handle and grow the trees that keep them dwarfed. So you could take a tree that's a bonsai and if you plant it in a field and walk away, it will grow into a large tree. So there's nothing genetically different from a bonsai or a regular plant of the same species. Uh, so if we want to get uh, very technical with the pursuit of bonsai, I think you have to have a combination of um, the horticultural understandings of plants and then the aesthetic understandings of, of art, refined high art. Because if when you're working on the trees, you need to know the science. But when you're viewing the trees and styling the trees and appreciating them, you need to know the art of it. There is this idea in Japanese, we want to take a, a, a tree and kind of reduce its essence and, and strengthen its essence so that this pine tree you're looking at or this maple you're looking at is the the epitome the it just it oozes the n nature of a pine tree right that's what we're, we're looking for here So the area that we're in now is my quarantine space and um, this house, this, this hoop house that we're in now and the one next to us, these are set up to meet the regulations for import into various countries around the world to help to ship trees from Japan around to other enthusiasts in various countries. At the moment, I have uh, all white pine because those are what I have the permits for to, to ship these into the States. And, um, and we hope to be able to do that in, um, in maybe November or December this year. So hopefully that works out. These are raw stock that I'm I have a, a particular customer that wants to come to Japan and study and practice on these trees himself. So I've, I've managed to find him 
some material that's large enough that we can practice things like wiring and big bends and, and doing that kind of, some specific techniques. And then after the, th so each year of the three year process that they're in the quarantine space, this gentleman can come and visit and work on these trees such that we can take them from this raw material that you see now, this untouched material. And by the time the phyto certs are ready to have them sent to the States, he will himself have helped work on the design and, and actually made them into beautiful trees. So not only does this gentleman now have the opportunity to say that he has trees from Japan, but he's actually played a role in, in shaping them and working on them and getting them in, to be bonsai. I want to build you know, a, a world-class bonsai garden here in Japan that caters to both domestic and foreign bonsai enthusiasts at the highest level. So some of the, the kind of big building projects that I have in mind um, are to help facilitate these international visitors. So uh, with the support of the people around the world that are excited about bonsai and want to be a part of something truly unique, the first Western-owned bonsai garden in Japan, I fully encourage people to contact me or to through social media, treehousebonsai.com, on Facebook, Instagram, Treehouse Bonsai. I have a Patreon page, Treehouse, Treehouse Bonsai. Um, so through all of those things, uh, you know, I'm, uh, one, I'm very excited to offer the opportunity to explore Japanese bonsai to help people do that.